Thirdly, you get to choose whether and how you're going to cooperate. You get to choose. Joshua 1.16, and then they answered Joshua, I just love this. Whatever you command, have commanded us, we will do. And wherever you send us, we will go. That's the attitude of the spirit of cooperation. And, and I reckon with that attitude, if, if everyone in any local church, and since I'm dealing with this one, we all have that. We can charge hell. Yeah. And we can put out all the fires. He's with a bucket of water. Mm. We've got that attitude in cooperation. So that's the, we're a team. We're a team. I, I, hate, I hate to say this because it's now on your TV and will be for the next five weeks. We're moving forward. <laughs> we're moving forward. With one vision, with one mission, and one strategy, yes, we will express in this one local church our vision, our mission, our strategy, each with your own unique contribution and unique personality. But cooperation and teamwork will put us in a better place than a bunch of bunch of individual stars doing their own thing. Yeah. That'll cause more damage than you like. Taking the next step is related to God's promises, your responsibility, uh, your attitude, and fourthly, as we wrap up this morning, your actions. And here there are just two of them. Joshua 1.1, 1, 1, get your supplies ready. Joshua 1.11, get your supplies ready. For these guys under Joshua's leadership, uh, they needed to go into the promised land. They needed to defeat all the tribes and peoples that were there and individuals, some of them were strong. Uh, that's not you, you're not, you're, not, you're not knocking down any tribe members or anything like that. Uh, for you, you're going to have to defeat any phobias that come against you, any fears, uh, any weaknesses that you have, any, any character things, you're going to have to deal with those. Uh, you may have to gain some new skills you need, may need to fan into flame the gifts that God has given you. That's from, from 2 Timothy uh, chapter 1. Uh, or attend some classes that we run here. We're doing a, we're, we're, we're doing a shape class uh, next month. You might need to put your name down for that uh, because that, that's, that's specific to what we're doing here. Uh, and yet it, it's, it's, it's a, a skill that will help you. Or you may need to rearrange your lifestyle or your calendar. Deal with stuff in your life that's just, just you have no margin in your life. Uh, or stuff that you've never fully dealt with that's coming back to haunt you like an echo in your life from the past, from your upbringing, whatever. You might get your supplies ready. Get your supplies ready. Secondly, nearly done, guys. Joshua 111, cross the Jordan River. And I wonder what your Jordan River is. You know, I, I think for some folk, the Jordan River, you know, we give an altar call at the end of every service. For some folk, the Jordan River is just getting themselves down here. Yeah. Now the thing about when God said this that we crossed the Jordan River was in flood. It, it was really, really in flood. And he said, you know, I want you to cross. And they would have all stood there looking at the Jordan River. You want us to cross? He said, yeah, what's going to happen? He said, you remember the previous generation when your fathers and grandfathers and mothers and that were all coming out of Egypt? And the Egyptian army was behind us, and we were confronted with the Red Sea. Remember how God opened that up and they all walked through? You've got another opportunity in this generation to do the same. It's the flood of the Jordan River, but you've actually got to step in before the water will hold back. And I can just imagine them standing there looking at it. You go, what? That's all right for the first one. <laughs> it might roll back, but he might be gone. I don't want to be the first one. And it's looking there at the river. It's Exodus 14, 15 in the Living Bible, when actually they were all at the Red Sea, the previous generation. And, and they were praying. Lord, open up the Red Sea. Lord, kill all the Egyptians. Lord, they're praying. And, and God says, uh, uh, Exodus chapter 14, verse 15 in the Living Bible, tell the people to quit praying and start moving. No, I want to pray some more. Because we want to be religious and holy. Just start moving. So and eventually, Someone had to step in the water, and the water fell back. Mm -hmm. And it's in your scripture there, I'll give it to you this morning. <coughs> Next scripture. As soon as the priests who carried the ark reached the Jordan River and their feet touched the water's edge, the waters from upstream stopped flowing. They just all rolled back. As soon as one person put their feet in there, they all rolled back. And everyone could cross over. And they did. I wonder what your Jordan River is. Because whatever yours is as an individual may be different than what mine is. Everyone crossed over. We've 
we've been talking this morning about taking the next step. And I don't know what your next step is, but you need to get ready. You need to set your foot and make a plan. Be careful and obey. You need to meditate on God's word. God wants you to do well. He really wants you to do so well. Have a spirit of prosperity rather than a spirit of poverty. Have a spirit of cooperation. Get your supplies ready. Step out and know the miracle of God. He has so much for you. You need to get ready. Father in heaven, I want to thank you for your word. Lord, as we look at uh, the folk in Joshua, they were about to step into the promised land and you ask us to step into the promised life, the abundant life. Father, as we've listened to your message this morning, Holy Spirit, I'm praying that you would just apply that to hearts and lives here. People wouldn't just dismiss it, but hear from you. Holy Spirit, that you would so touch hearts and lives this morning in such a powerful way. Be like a red hot brand this morning. Someone we can't get past. Father, help us to claim what you have for us.